Hi everyone, my name is Tian Liu from University of Pennsylvania. Today I'm going to present our work, Fast Simulation of Mass Brain Systems. This is a joint work done by me, Adam Bucktail from University of Utah, James O'Brien from UC Berkeley, and my advisor Ladislav Kavan from University of Pennsylvania. Mass Brain Systems are widely used in physically based simulations. For example, we can link the vertices on a 1D strength together to simulate a vivid hair motion. Or we can set up connectivity graph of a 2D thin shell and use it to simulate lots of fancy secondary effects of a class. Of course, we can also approximate volume conservation properties of a material by replacing the edges of tetrahedra with springs, so that we can torture a virtual animal very easily. Performance of a mass spring simulator can be very important. For real-time applications, we only have limited time budget like 17 milliseconds per frame. That leaves an even tighter time budget for physics because of the existence of other key features. Even in offline applications, fast simulation is still wanted. Because running simulation is highly likely to be the bottleneck of a design loop, faster simulation means faster design iterations. There are lots of active research fields related with mass spring systems such as material models, time integrators, collision detection and response, and energy conservation property. Um, our work is mainly about the time integration, which is the time discretization of the continuous mechanics. When we gather positions, velocities, and forces of the all the vertices in a certain frame, we want to predict the average in the next time step. And what's more, we want our prediction to be always fast and stable. Explicit Euler method is the most intuitive implementation of time integration. Here H is the time step size, M is a diagonal mass matrix, and Q is the position vector of all the vertices, V is the velocity vector, and F is the force. The reason why it's called an explicit method is because all the unknown variables are aggregated in the left hand side of the equation. Once we know the quad current quantities, we can calculate the next time quantities explicitly. The problem of explicit Euler's method is that it injects extra energy into the system, so simulation can be very unstable. The larger time step that we use, the more likely the simulation will explode like this. Implicit Euler's method is a more stable time integration method. It also starts with the finite difference of Newton's second law, but now all the unknown quantities are on both sides of the equations. One well-known work, the Wittgen's method, which is also known as a semi-implicit Euler's method, linearizes the force at Qn, is essentially one iteration of Newton's method. We can see that this method works very well, it's very stable, but uh, it is generally slow because it needs to solve a time-varying linear system every frame. Most of the implementations of semi-implicit Euler's method take advantage of conjugate gradient solvers. However, in order to make the system matrix positive definite and keep a good condition number of the system matrix, the time step size is still limited. And instead of solving the system using Newton's method, a quasi-Newton method that approximates Hessian using constant matrices have also been used in time integration too. Alternatively, a recent work proposed the scheduled updates of Cholesky factors, trading off accuracy of the Hessian for its more efficient amortized evaluation. Another interesting alternative to classical force-based physics is position-based dynamics. For example, PBD projects the vertices back towards resonance rings and iterates to the entire system using a gauss fashion. However, this kind of approach does not take correct material properties into account. It can be worse when the iterations are terminated far away from the convergence. In these cases, material property is highly dependent on number of iterations. Lower number of iterations will make the material look stretchier. Also, myonuclease and a lot of papers that are involving string limiting share the similar idea of this position-based approach. They present certain trade-offs by departing from the traditional elasticity models and relying on heuristic constraint projection, which utilizes parameters incompatible with standard models. As a short conclusion, explicit methods have instability problems so it cannot be used for simulations with large time step sizes. Implicit methods such as baruch wittekind method are not fast enough for real-time applications. Position-based approaches are lack of correct material properties. 
We want to start from implicit representation of time integration and speed up its performance to real. Okay, okay. so um, let's get started. First of all, let's formulate the time integration problem into an optimization problem. Remember that our method also starts from implicit time integration, where H is the time step size, M is the diagonal mass matrix, Q, V, F are position, velocity, and force res respectively. We can substitute the first equation into the second one to eliminate the unknown Vn plus 1. Now plus 1 is the only unknown in this equation. We write it as x for simplicity. Also, we aggregate Qn plus Hvn to a no quantity y. We can see that y is an inertial term of the system that predicts next time position of all the vertices if they follow their current velocities without any forces. Couple the force term into internal force and external force. The so internal force is a conservative force that we can derive from potential energy, and the external force can be seen as a constant during a certain time step, such as gravity, wind, and the penalty force. In order to solve this equation, we can integrate the function over x and define an optimization problem. The second term changes its sign because uh, force can be interpreted as the negative gradient of the potential energy. In that case, the arg main of the objective function g, which is denoted using x star, is the exact solution of our implicit time integration. This relationship has been already used in some work, such as example-based elastic materials in 2011. Now let's take a closer look at this uh, optimization formula. We can see that the first term is the inertial term, where y equals to qm plus hvn. Our next time position x will have the inertia to meet y if there is no force acted on all of the particles. This term is good, because uh, it's a convex quadratic function of x, and the Hessian matrix of this term is basically the constant matrix, which is a, a lumped diagonal mass matrix. The last term is the accidental external force term, where x has a trend to go to the same direction with the external force. It's a linear of x, which is also good. The second term is the internal energy term, and it can be seen as the sum up of all spring energies defined by Hooke's law. The integration problem becomes hard because uh, this term is not a simple quadratic potential anymore. By the way, if we define the integration problem from the view of optimization, the semi-implicit Euler's method can be seen as a second-order Taylor expansion of it. However, the system matrix of this second-order Taylor expansion can be indefinite, and is also dependent on time-varying states. In order to solve this optimization problem with faster techniques, we want to reformulate it. The first thing we did is to introduce a set of new auxiliary variables into the system. In the following illustrations, I will represent the spring as a blue line with two blue circles at the endpoints. So capital E is a potential energy function of I spring. We introduce a new variable di, where its, rest length, where its length is equal to the rest length of the spring ri. So di can be interpreted as an arbitrary vector on an ri radius ball, and we do it for every spring. The setting can also be seen as a 1D analog of as rigid as possible in 2007. Um, we want to prove that among all possible directions, the right-hand side equation reaches its minimum when di has the same direction with pi1 minus pi2. What's more, the minimum value of this equation is exactly the energy of the i spring. So the proof can be very intuitive. In the first step, we show that no matter what direction that di has, our formulation is always larger or equal than the original one by reverse triangle inequality. In step 2, we substitute di equals to ri times the endpoint directions and find that in that case, those two formulations reach exactly the same value. Therefore, we prove that the minimum of our reformulated energy is the uh, original spring potential energy. After rewriting the potential angle spring, we can sum up all the springs to get the total potential energy of the entire system. Then we can rewrite the total e potential energy into a perfect quadratic term. So details of the derivation can be seen in our paper. We aggregate the constant matrices into L and J. Noted that L is nothing but a stiffness weighted Laplacian matrix of the system, so it's guaranteed to be positive semi-definite. 
And also, as long as the connectivity of the spring network and the stiffness of each spring do not change, L and J will be both constant. Then we can substitute our internal energy into our objective function and arrive at our uh, final optimization form. The uh, minimum of this problem is an exact solution of implicit Euler time step. But uh, uh, the state vector x and the auxiliary d are both unknown. Optimizing both of them at the same time will be a mess. However, it's not bad to optimize them independently. Fixing one of them will end up with uh, solving the other one with ease. Therefore, we use an alternating local global method to solve this minimization problem. It's also known as a block coordinate descent method. In the illustration on the right, we again represent the mass points as blue dots and the springs as blue lines. And let's do the optimization. Like most of the optimization method, we need to choose an initial guess to begin with. In most of the cases, the choosing different initial guesses won't affect the solution, but better initial guesses can lead us to the bottom of, that, of the valley faster. Here we choose y, which is the inertia term as the initial guess, that makes sense because um, this, this is where all the vertices want to go if there's no force. Um, and in the local step, we fix the positions of all the vertices and try to rotate all the springs to their best rotations. Once we finish the local step, all the springs will be aligned with difference of their endpoints directions. Next, we will do the global step where all the spring directions are fixed now and the vertices are movable. We solve this linear system to get the positions of the vertices directly. Notice that the system matrix M plus H square L is constant and positive definite. We can prefactor it using an LLT Cholesky factorization, so in each iteration, we only need to do backward substitution and achieve linear time complexity to solve this equation. Um, we can prove that both our local step and global step are monotonically decreasing the objective function so that the workflow of our algorithm will be first, take an initial guess x equals to y then, do alternating local global iterations until it converges however, in most of the cases, the optimization won't be able to converge given a certain short time budget so we can just terminate the iteration loop earlier the results of comparing different numbers of iterations will be shown later um, for collision, theoretically, our method can be coupled with any type of collision detection and resolution method. We can treat penalty forces which in one time step has a constant force and combine it into the external force term in the right-hand side of the equation. Or we can short-circuit this process and move all the illegal vertices to collision-free states like position-based dynamics. For damping, uh, because the current velocity Vn is taken into account in the y term, and we can apply the any type of a post-processing damping method that changes Vn at the end of each frame, for example, either dragging. Also, force-based implicit damping models can be formulated as a convex quadratic term with constant Hessian matrix, so it can be combined into the optimization formula too. Now let me show some uh, results of our method. Here is a result of a swinging curtain example with different number of iterations. With one iteration per frame, our methods look different from the exact solution, but notice that it runs super fast at 5 milliseconds, while the exact solution costs 13 seconds. With more and more iterations allowed, our method converts to the exact solution. Also, we can notice that even when our method is terminated far away from convergence, we still maintain the material property well. Then we implemented a brush simulation that uses a similar spring network construction model with Andrew Sully and colleagues' hair simulation paper in 2008. This brush has around 4,000 vertices and 12,000 springs inside, and we approximate self-collision detection and response between strands in this case using a KD tree. It still runs super fast with the interactive frame rate. We also tested our method using the ArcSim framework from UC Berkeley. We took this open source to close simulator and replaced the finite element method with the mass spring system. Um, we also disabled the remeshion part of this framework so that the Cholesky factor will be constant. It worked well too. We then studied the convergence rate by defining the relative error here. 
Here xi is the state vector after i's iteration, x0 is the initial state, and x star is the exact solution calculated by Newton's method. So just to keep in mind that in the following examples, we are always iterating within one time step. This is a graph that comparing our method with Newton's method. The blue line is Newton's method with direct solver using Cholesky factorization. The green line is Newton's method with conjugate gradient solver, and the red line is our method. Since each iteration of our method is orders of magnitude faster than Newton's method, we won't be able to draw the data dots explicitly on the red line. Let's zoom in at the first few iterations and see what's going on there. If you still remember the time budget graph that I showed you at the beginning, given 13 milliseconds, our method achieves similar accuracy with one Newton iteration, but runs much much faster than that. If you only wanted a faster approximation of the exact solution, our method is the right way to go. We observe that there is a cross point between the line of our method and Newton's method when running the optimization for about 1.1 seconds. After that point, Newton's method converges faster than our method. Moreover, when approaching to the exact solution, our method then has this quadratic tail like Newton's method. Hence, if we want this, the result to be exact solutions, we recommend it only use our method to bootstrap Newton's method. Then, we conducted experiments to see the behavior of our methods with different spring stiffness and spatial resolutions. These experiments show that our method will converge slower in higher spring stiffness systems and it will converge slower in high resolution systems as expected. In challenging situations such as strong impacts on collision, our method maintains the simulation time but propagates the shock wave slower than the exact solution. When we pause the simulation, as you can see, the wrinkles simulated by our method are less vivid than the ones simulated by the exact solution. We believe that is because while translational changes can propagate immediately in the global step, rotational changes in our method are only propagating during the local steps. But again, our method is only an approximate version of the exact solution given a limited number of iterations like 20. If we allow it to run long enough time, it will converge to the same thing as the exact solution. To summarize this talk, our method can produce a very fast approximation given a limited time budget. It inherits the stability property from implicit Euler's method, so it is extremely stable. It converges to an exact solution, so it can be used for quick simulation preview and for bootstrapping Newton's method. Also, we believe that the workflow of our method is very clear, so it can be implemented very quickly. We will also release our source code on our project website soon. In the future, we want to generalize it to more type of constraints such as angular bending constraints and volumetric constraints. We want to improve the convergence rate on the larger systems by using hierarchical solver or other type of numerical methods. Also, the Hessian matrix of our global step is dependent of the connectivity of the mass spring system. So for example, in applications like virtual surgeries that involve lots of cutting, our methods won't improve the performance a lot compared to Newton's method. However, even in those cutting applications, the change of the connectivity graph are still local, so we want to explore the faster update methods when connectivity changes. And last but not least, notice that even barrett Whitkin's method is only an approximation of the exact solution, but the results still seem so fine, so we can maybe we can tolerate the errors more. We are curious about what is a notable error to the average observer from the view of perceptual aspect. At last, we thank our friends and anonymous reviewers for those insightful discussions, and we appreciate our funding agencies to support our work. Thank you for listening.